Hi Salim, good evening. Uh, Hi Salim, good evening, good evening. How thank you, you for joining and thank you for accepting uh, our interview session. And uh, welcome to Healthcare Engineering YouTube channel and its uh, introductions uh, interview session for the biomedical engineering community. It's our pleasure to have you here. Me too, me too. Thanks for inviting me and it's uh, it's an honor that can uh, I can share my experience with healthcare. I'm, yes, I'm highly yes, appreciating yes. the good course you are doing here. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And uh, it seems uh, I was trying to catch you for a long time and quite, you were quite busy, right? Nowadays, everyone yeah. is busy. Even myself it, also it, it, was it, busy. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I think we had a uh, we had a plan, I think, last year. Yes, last yes, year yes. We were calling, you want to ask a session, but I was uh, very busy and occupied most of the time, more of the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that we have this time. So you can yeah. share your experiences and your skills. The biomedical juniors can gain from your experiences. They can learn something, right? Sure. sure. Okay, Salim. So let's start the session. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, request you to introduce yourself. And uh, so while introducing, you can talk about yourself and your experiences wherever you worked and all, right? So please uh, introduce yourself. So basically, uh, my name, uh, full name, I can go as Zakir Hussain Salim, and uh, I am currently my qualifications. I'm having an MBA as well as BA, uh, BA in journalism in biomedical engineering. So I did my uh, biomedical engineering at uh, Birmingham City University, it's a UK qualification, and moving on. I started getting my internship at uh, first internship at Durden's Hospital, and uh, it was not an easy way to get an internship like today. Those days, uh, uh, those days, uh, it was very competitive, and biomedical engineering was entering a field entering into Sri Lanka. Mm. And uh, previously, it was electrical and electronic engineers who were doing the role of biomedical engineers. So, and after that, it was. Uh, means that we established, uh, I do a biomedical engineer needed, then only the companies, hospitals, they had an idea of uh, recruiting and planning to have a career goal for the biomedical engineers, then they had a sound idea and then it, have, it is the way to us mostly, I can say, we established island, okay, my badge and other badge and most of the students, they started coming in, a lot of companies started uh, opening new branches and companies, a lot of uh, they try, uh, started to get a lot of. Uh, usually in Sri Lanka, it's basically we tie up with the other company in abroad and we work like an agent. So we don't mm -hmm. manufacture anything uh, bigly here. So mm -hmm. we import and stuff. Right? And they started getting a huge range of products. And it got established, and currently it's a huge requirement. And uh, presently, I am working at East of Metro Campus as head of mm -hmm. biomedical. And um, I joined uh, this year in January. And uh, now I'm into the academic field. Previously, I was in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. And here at East of, we are planning to start biomedical engineering high national diploma, mm -hmm. awarded by PSA this September. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the work necessary things are going and we are basically we are designing a state-of-art laboratory it's not go going to be just academic it's going to be most into practical and technicality of an engineer which is needed so when you ever see uh, an engineer in student when they enter the college what we do is mostly most of the campuses like what happened for us as well in my personal experience we were taught the academic uh, ideas, everything was very low. Right? Mm -hmm. so just because you teach practically in a slide, you know, in a whiteboard, whatever, this is that is not what is practical. Practical this means that you should have hand on hand experience. Yes. So here yeah, at ESO, we are trying to provide, we are providing that, we will be providing that. Mm -hmm. And um, um, basically, students will have a different experience, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm planning it in a very larger level, bigger scale, and we are going to open it. Uh, currently, we are uh, planning to start uh, uh, initially in uh, Colombo and Kendi. Moving forward, we are planning to open in other branches as well, like Japan, Batik Flow, mm -hmm. and Kulunayakala. So here, 
uh, in academic what i saw why i moved into academic is for last a long time i was in the healthcare field for a long mm -hmm. i worked in many top hospitals in top management and i saw many things and i saw once i came to my before coming to academic i was the head of biomedical for melsa health and there i was working as a biomedical engineer for two institutes basically the melsa mm -hmm. labs and melsa hospitals so mm -hmm. when i joined the project there in 2019 uh, my previous boss, um, who took, uh, he was uh, Dr. Katie Eleven, and uh, he called me for that project. And uh, Dr. Eleven said, uh, so, "This is he gave me a big idea of what is his aim and vision. He's having a huge aim and vision in Sri Lanka to do many things in the healthcare. Then uh, he gave me an opportunity that we basically those of us was a, we took the entire." Uh, Hospital, like we took the management and we redesigned the hospital into a very great level. And there, uh, I had experience uh, to start everything from the beginning because usually my previous experience before joining Melsta, I was working now since an established hospital, every operation and things, everything was going in a smooth level. So basically, you go there and you just you have to build. I built many things in grounds as well from the department till, and uh, I had my head. Uh, uh, her name was uh, Rasika, Miss Rasika, and she was uh, a good um, boss, and she died, and she trusted me mostly. And we did a, we, we did a, we established a well biomedical uh, department in the entire hospital. And so mm -hmm. this it was an operational thing, so you have to do day to day activities and improve it. So, but here the play at Melsta, it's we have to start from the scratch. So I had a beginning like, how do you start a hospital from the beginning? So there are every perspective uh, from biomedical, all the engineering principles I had from civil, mechanical, everything. Even when they were building the hospital, they were innovating certain things. I had interacted with the uh, civil engineers who were coming for the construction work and designing the theaters, the patient room, ICU, NICU, mm -hmm. and uh, Sorry, there was not IC, there was NIC. So even like, um, uh, so basically when you become a biomedical engineer, it's not about you look up or uh, you go to a hospital, you go to an industry just to do a medical equipment or not. That's a perspective as well. Biomedical engineering is a bridge between medicine and electrical engineering. But in here, it's not like other engineers. You learn all engineering principles. For us, when you go to a hospital, you should know it's not now when you take an equipment, let's take a ventilator. When you go to an ICU, you just you, you can't you are just going to put the ventilator there and you want to the doctor will put it to a patient. But what is really needed for an engineer to start that ventilator running? You need a proper current supply, right? Mm -hmm. And to get the current supply, you need to have a proper design, an electrical proper electrical panel design. It's like basically a dedicated breaker for that ventilator. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be low. It should never be low. So as an engineering youngsters who are looking this program and have any idea, you should not uh, only think that we'll be learning about medical equipment. You have to learn other things as well. There it is not, you should not think this as a burden. But it has just like you know, you should love what you study. It's for the sake of your life. Because end of the day, that will help you. When you learn more, it will help you. So uh, in uh, Joseph Fraser, I had to go tell the civil engineer to get the electrical uh, consultant and design in such a way that each have a dedicated electrical connection. And you have to see what sort of a machine you are putting. Ventilators, basic, basically it's a single phase. Imagine you are going to put a uh, high pressure uh, sterilizer, which is a three phase. Then you cannot put a single phase uh, current uh, line there, you will get a three phase dedicator. Mm -hmm. So what are the thickness of fire? whether these people are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So these things you have to analyze and study and you have to implement and you have to execute properly. So that was my good experience. And now in Melsta Labs, moving on, in Melsta Labs also, Dr. Edwin wanted me to work there also. And it was a good management there. Uh, we established five to six labs there and I had experience to uh, establishing a state-of-art laboratory. Okay, mm -hmm. state-of-art medical lab. And from equipment, still designing, everything came in a high standard. Not mm -hmm. like then after moving there, I was working there for like two and a half years. 
uh, it was a good experience. It was a long time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, now after that, also now for a long time I was in the healthy arcade for many hospitals and I felt like yeah I have reached my top point and what is next? So yeah, I was starting next and I am a very fashion oriented guy. Not okay. like it's not all about earning money. You become engineer, sit in a place, you get money. Say no, I want to. Uh, I want to admit to new things. I want to see new things and I want to. Basically, I love taking challenges. I want to see what is it. Then I felt like uh, I designed there and I was staying a couple of months at my home when I was thinking what to do and I was working a little bit uh, on what to do because you need a break also. And the person needs a break. I was taking some break and I was doing some entrepreneur work. I was entrepreneur for some time. And uh, yeah, you, to, you keep yourself occupied. Then I realized uh, I had a plan to do lecturing. Mm-hmm. Most not now, but in a couple of years time. So now since I am I had enough and I was like, why don't I start it now? Then I met uh, the, I had uh, I met uh, the CEO of Nisha. Okay. I uh, Nishan said my boss and I gave him uh, a proposal. And I saw that Nisha has a good potential to start this mm-hmm. program. I I put my idea. Mm-hmm. Why don't you start biomedical engineering? And they were, he was very pleased and he was very supportive. And he said, uh, I had a chat with him and uh, in through Facebook. And I asked, I thought uh, I won't get a response very time soon. But next moment, once I sent the message, he said, let's meet. The next day I met him. And he said, we have to start, let's start immediately. Then mm-hmm. we had some discussions and up and down. And uh, I gave a proposal, the management accepted, and he started. And so far, the support by him was tremendous. He has supported me thick and thin. Everything I executed, he trusted. And in return, my policy is like this. I'm telling for youngsters who are looking this program, remember one thing. Uh, money will come and go. But you should always keep your trust and trust others have on that, especially. Mm-hmm. So, and in healthcare, basically it works on trust. It's like a family. And yeah. the person who becomes a biomedical engineer, he should be very much intact with his heart. It's not with mm-hmm. intact with his mind. Because mind will tell you, mind, brain is like giving you, give you the opportunity. It's opportunity. Basically, whether it's correct or wrong, it wants to win. But heart will tell you do the right thing. So as a biomedical engineer, you should always follow your heart. You should have the knowledge. But mm-hmm. heart is the same. When you have a pure heart, a biomedical engineer should have a pure heart because irrespective from the race, religion, gender, whatever it is, when you work in a healthcare industry, you will help that. Mm-hmm. If you have a biased mindset or you are particularly aligned to something, okay, let's say, for example, basis, okay, if you are aligned to something, that aligned will take you to the So you should be totally away from it. So that experience, that thing has been helped. That is the thing, that quality. That quality is the thing which made me to go up in ladders very well. easily. Okay? Great, great, and, great. Uh, always. And that I learned from uh, another, I have to say, uh, during my school time, uh, during my A-level, my maths teacher, he was, I won't mention his name, Sir Dhananjay, and he always say something about willpower. Mm-hmm. You and the will can succeed in anywhere. Yes, during school days, we used to, you know, how students are, okay? Yeah. But it, it ticked my head, yeah, this man has something. And uh, yeah, really, and it helped me a lot. And my school foundation, my teachers, especially my science faculty teachers, Sir Gunaratna, Sir Deva, and uh, my Deva, the bio and physics teacher, respectively. I had a chemistry teacher, Sir Sitra Miswasanta. Yeah, my bio sir and my physics sir, they were good mentors. They used to say to me, yes, one day or another day, you will go in a better height. And I always wanted to become a doctor when I was young. Okay? Mm-hmm. Of becoming a doctor, what made me to go engineer? I love to maths. I had okay. a huge love to maths. So when there was a decision to choose between maths and bio to my A-levels, I did my London all over and A-levels. I decided to do both. My school luckily we had a 
option where you can do both. So I didn't okay. want to sacrifice one to do another. I did okay. both. So you did both. I did both. And okay. later on, uh, later on uh, I was thinking what sort of engineering to move by doing both. And I thought to become a chemical engineer. Uh -huh. okay. My question to biomedical is very accidental, all right? Mm -hmm. I never knew what is biomedical. Now today, students, it's good. Before they uh, enroll into a program, uh, before they enroll into a program, they see many perspectives. What will their future be? Where can they go? How they can go? How long will it take to go? How much salary they can earn? Where can they settle? It made a huge plan. But my perspective, my was nothing like that. I said and most of my colleagues also. Mm -hmm. So I want to become a chemical engineer, and unfortunately, I got some good error results. And um, and uh, what happened was uh, I could not go. Uh, I lost my scholarship, and uh, we had a lot of I had a lot of financial problems.